Here then, we see the new version scene editor, also known just as scene editor, and also affectionately referred to by some long-standing Lightwavers as the spreadsheet editor. In terms of animation, the main thing that it has for us is this, the dope sheet. What we see here is a representation of our timeline there, along the top. And of course, the keyframes for items are denoted as these little blocks. You can set the range that the dope sheet is looking at here. Ordinarily, of course, you set that to whatever the range of your animation itself is, the range of your timeline. And you can zoom in and out of the dope sheet by dragging the little arrow here on the slider bar, as well as, of course, move around the dope sheet by dragging that slider bar. And you also have the familiar play controls available to you down here. The main function of the dope sheet is that it gives you a very simple and easy way to quickly manipulate keys and their timings. So for instance, you can click here on a cell for a keyframe and you can just drag it around in time as you see fit, altering its placement on the timeline thus. If you click, hold and drag out, you'll see that you can select whole blocks of cells like this encompassing many keyframes, which can similarly be then drug around in time in this manner. You can also time squash and stretch ranges of keyframes with the same setup here by clicking the little yellow handles at either end of your selection range. That allows you to stretch or squash the key times on whole ranges of keyframes. You are not limited to selecting only one item type. For instance, cameras and lights can't be simultaneously selected together. But in the dope sheet, their keyframes can. So you can drag out a block here that encompasses both light and camera keyframes and drag or stretch that around as you see fit. You can also make multi selections that only include a few keyframes, such as I could select this one here hold down shift, select that one there, and what I get picked is the entire block of everything within that square from corner to corner. Or I can use control, so I can select a key here, hold control, select one there, hold control, select another here. And whilst you can see the dotted draw line appears to encompass all of the keyframes, if you look at which ones are highlighted, of course, it's only those ones which I clicked on. Thus, when dragging in time, I'm only dragging those selected keyframes, or indeed squashing and stretching time for those selected keyframes. You can select entire rows of keyframes. So that would, of course, be all keyframes for a single item, simply by clicking here at the side of the Dope Editor. And you can select whole columns of keyframes. So that's keyframes at a single time for all items in the list by clicking at the top here where the number marker is. And similarly, you can use shift click if you want to select whole blocks like that, whole blocks of columns or whole blocks of rows. Or of course, use control if you're wanting to be able to select multiple columns or multiple rows and grab only the keyframes in those columns and rows like this. We can also see some other very useful drag functionality available to us when doing keyframe adjustments like this. First of all, notice that when we are dragging keyframes around like this in time, or indeed when we are time stretching blocks of keyframes, you'll sometimes see the keyframes jump around like that one did just there. What the new scene editor does is it quantizes keys for you as you go. So the level of stretch I put in may not necessarily have put this middle key here onto an exact whole number keyframe. It may have pushed it to a fractional position. But when I released, the scene editor automatically quantized that key for me exactly. Notice, however, that what you can do is you can hold down the control key. And then when you start shifting frames, notice how now the actual range marker itself no longer snaps to cells. This is now pushing the keys into fractional positions. Clearly, you don't see that fraction here on the scene editor because the dope sheet itself is quantized into these singular cells. But if you look at the actual key positions here in the timeline, then you can see that I've got a key there falling somewhere between frame 25 and frame 26. What you can also do is hold down the shift key when dragging and doing that will force keys back into quantized positions, as we can see has occurred there. And both these things are also true when you are, for instance, 
time stretching a range of keys. You can hold down control and that will give you time stretching that will put keys into fractional positions if need be. So the time stretch is exact and the relative positions in time between keyframes is always maintained. Or of course, you can use shift click and that will force them back into a quantized state there. You also, if you right click on a selection of keyframes like this, have the option here in selection to quantize keys, which will snap them to the nearest whole keyframes. The other thing that you can do with these click drag operations on keyframes or whole sets of keyframes is to hold down the Alt key. If you hold Alt, click and drag, you'll see that what you get are the keyframes copied like this. If you release them over the top of one another, then those keys will paste over the existing keyframes. And we'll see in a moment the different paste options that are available elsewhere in the dope sheet. But when you have got whole sets or blocks of keys for multiple items, this makes a great way to just be able to copy and paste whole ranges like this. Just select the block and alt drag them out. And there you have nicely copied keyframe. Let's get away from the simple example of just a camera and light there and see, of course, you know how the dope sheet is working when we are working with whole rigs. What we see, of course, is that there I make my selection in viewport and you see that the scene list here automatically expands to show me all of my items there. All of my selected or viewport selected items have these little ticks next to them. Sometimes hierarchy view like this can be, you know, a little difficult to have working for good visualization of exactly, you know, what there is where and so on. Here on the scene editor, you'll notice that there's this hierarchy list switch that switches you between a hierarchy view of items like classic scene editor and this simple list view. Either way round, though, of course, you know, the items are very much scattered in this list. And so to see all of the keyframes on all of the things, you've got this very long trawling list of items where indeed there might be many items with no keyframes at all. The scene editor allows you to get a much tidier view of your selections via the hide button here. If I click that, you'll notice that what seems to happen is everything vanishes. Here's what's really going on though. You'll notice that clicking items in the scene editor here highlights their selection in the scene editor, but also of course selects them over here in the viewport. So here I've got the camera highlighted in scene editor. I can still select all of my controllers here. The camera remains highlighted, but my selection gets these little ticks. If I now click hide, you'll see that only the camera remains in my list view there. What hide does is to hide from the list everything that isn't highlighted in the scene editor. And whilst making selections in scene editor mirror over in selections in the viewport, selections in the viewport don't automatically mirror over to highlighting in the scene editor. All you simply have to do is just somewhere on this list, right click, go to selection and choose highlight viewport selection. Now, if I click hide, aha, we see that all of my selected items are maintained in the list whilst nothing else is. And thus the dope sheet here is now giving me a much better view of all my keyframe blocks for these items. As such, I can start selecting whole blocks of keyframes for whole chunks of items quickly and easily and just nudge and move them around as I desire. If we go into the right click on a selected block of keyframes, then you'll see that you've got a couple of options. Sheet, select and unselect all. Very straightforward stuff. The most interesting functions are here in the selection sub menu. I can quickly take my selected items there and pop them open in the graph editor. This of course brings up all of the relevant channels for all of those items there. I've also got cut, copy, paste and other things here. So let's say I wanted to take all of these keys for all of these items and copy them to a new position. I can just click copy, come out to a new position here, right click, go selection and paste again. But notice that I have two pastes, paste over and paste insert. Let's do paste over first. And what you'll see that that does is just pastes over anything that's already there. If we see the other option then, paste insert, notice what this does. They paste in and everything else gets bumped up in time. 
This works, of course, not just for blocks of one keyframe, but let's say that I had a block of a whole bunch of keyframes here. I could, of course, copy that, come to this column, perhaps over here, to selection, paste insert, and you see that all of the animation occurring after that is bumped along to make room for it. Similarly, you also have this other insert option here, insert gap. Notice here that I've just got one key cell selected, no actual key, just one cell. If I do selection, insert gap, boom, everything after that, all keys are budged up by one frame, one cell. Alternatively, you might have three cells selected. Go to selection, insert gap, all frames thereafter are bunched up by three cells or three frames. Do also notice that this insert occurrence also applies to deletion. So you'll see that if I have a bunch of keyframes selected there and I choose delete, everything gets knocked back by one frame. It's kind of like uninsert. Consequently, if I'm wanting to delete keyframes in the scene editor, but without causing everything after them to get bunched down, then what I need to use is the selection cut feature here. Lastly, you can also switch to looking at different things here. At the minute we've been in the items menu, you've also got the surfaces menu. Thus, if you had animated parameters on surfaces, their keyframes can be controlled here from the dope sheet. And also, of course, you can do channel specific. So you can find an item here like the head one, expand its channels. And there you have, of course, the keys that exist on each channel. And you can treat them in exactly the same way as you do the keys elsewhere in the dope sheet like this. Notice also that the channel method of editing is available here on the items tab. However, it doesn't work when you've got the hide mode enabled. If we disable that and we click the little channel plus icon here, then we see the channels become expanded and we can work on the individual channels of a given keyframe. So there you have it. That is the new version scene editor and most specifically the dope sheet, a very fast and handy tool for manipulating and managing whole sets of keys on whole sets of items and carrying out all of the little moment to moment adjustments that you will commonly make to animation when working through a motion.